The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 5th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call, 877-927-6648. Not sure the phone lines are open. i got to check in on that. But uh, you can certainly reach me by sending me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday, Election Day Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We will begin our morning with a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading to the upside, all the sectors inside the S&P 500. We're going to try to figure out what all that means. We're going to go hunting for clues as well as take a look at the instruments that you want me to take a look at. The Dow is up 325 points, the S&P 49, NASDAQ 100, 201, Russell's up 17, Semi's up 57, Trading's up 201, New York Stock Exchange, which we know has got a TD9 count bottom pattern, that's up 145 points. The Dow also has a TD9 count pattern out there. We take a look at Goldilocks. It's trading up uh, five dollars. Silver's up twenty-five cents. Natural gas about four cents. Uh, lights we crude up eighty-nine pennies. The thirty-year Treasury back about a half a point. Printed out one seventeen oh eight. Now our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside are Booking Holdings up seventy-seven bucks. That's one point six percent. Cummings Inc up twenty-eight bucks, nearly nine percent. Powell Industries twenty-three bucks, nearly nine percent. Astera Labs is up twenty-nine points. Twenty-nine. I'm sorry, twenty-nine percent. That's a twenty-dollar move. And Top Build Corp up 16 bucks, uh, nearly 5% to the upside. Our shakers to the downside, led by Selenese Corp. It's a $30 move. It's a 25% move to the downside. Ferrari's racing to the downside off 6%. 27 buckaroonies. NXP Semiconductors down 16 or 7%. Novanta Inc. down 13 bucks, 7%. Fabrinet is off 13 bucks as well. That's a 5.5% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at that New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. As we've said, it's in the uh, it was in the oversold reading area. We did complete that New York Stock Exchange TD9 count bottom yesterday. That was a signal that the uh, uh, oversold condition should begin working itself off. Well, it's basically done that at this stage. Now, price is still below that zero threshold level. If it closes above that area, well, then we may be getting a signal that buyers are the ones that are in control. We're just working off oversold conditions. Uh, sellers are still the one in control. That changes if we get above that zero threshold level. Again, that zero threshold level is nothing more than the difference between the uh, 19 to 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line, which is in panel number two up here. If we take a look at that spot fix, we've mentioned this. Uh, but spot fix right now trading well above its 50-day exponential moving average. And that's the price point that price needs to close below in order for buyers to have an edge. Spot fix is at 1909. Uh, uh, the 50 day is at 1909. Spot fix is at 2043. Now, if we made it all the way down below 1909, that's going to be more than a 10% one-day rate of uh, more than a minus, less than a 
negative 10% one-day rate of change. If we get that, that's actually an initiation move to the upside out there. We don't have that signal as we speak right now. The actual percentage to the downside is 7%, but still something to watch as we come into the close because that would be one of those clues out there that we would want to pay attention to. What else do I need to look at here? I'm going to go with um, not much. Uh, we did talk about, or I did talk about during, well, you know what we're going to do here? Because I did not finish the uh, market update on the nine panel. So let me do just that. We uh, gave, we uh, we um, we stopped at about, I think, the U.S. dollar index. So U.S. dollar index is consolidated. It's got a T9 count on top, consolidation with inside its profile. The key level to be watching there today, tonight, uh, overnight is going to be the bottom of that pro is going to be the bottom of that profile 103.56. So if we close below that, that's going to signal that we're likely to head lower. Now we're going to take a look at the three currency pairs that make up 83% of the U.S. dollar index. We'll see what message they're generating for us as well. If we take a look at gold, it's just a consolidation with inside its profile. Nothing broken there. Uh, that profile range is at 27.3010 and 27.69. Silver is trading below profile support. In fact, it's found resistance at the bottom of that profile for the last three trading sessions, that being 3301. In the case of Lights Recruit, a consolidation inside its daily profile. It's about to test resistance or the sell zone. And that's between 7302 and 7536. We got a nice buy the D point uh, bottom pattern yesterday inside of natural gas. We now have a new profile. That new profile has got resistance at 286 and support at 269. And finally, the 30 year treasure, which we're going to take a look at in detail for Jambalaya inside our Tiger's Den. But that continues to find resistance, even though it's got a road indicator bottom continues to find resistance in its sell zone so it's only been a counter trend move out there in order for this to be something other than a counter trend move we need to see a close above 118.18 out there so that's finishing up that nine panel chart uh, let's just start uh, i mentioned the equity future contract so we take a look at this set of charts right now We've got three new profiles that are attempting to form. As I'd mentioned in ESDNQ, those profiles are above price out there. And that's typically a signal of overhead supply, and really it's a bearish condition. Right now, what I would say is uh, your resistance level inside the ES is 58.1250, and inside the NQ, I get up to the center of that profile out there. It's really 20, it's between 23.98 and 24.76.50. Now, these profiles will not complete until, uh, will not be confirmed until 6 p.m. So at some point in time, I may already be out at dinner, but I will post these charts and these profile levels inside the Tiger's Den so that those that are uh, trading intraday really have have some good guidelines as to you know see how the market is interpreting interpreting the election results as they're coming in but such so you know where it's support and resistance is at now there's a new profile that's also attempting to form inside of the Dow. That Dow profile's got support at 41,893. The center is at uh, 42,301, and the top is at 42,709. Looks pretty equally balanced to me. So price just trading inside that range out there. Finally, we take a look at the Russell 2000. No topping pattern, no bottoming pattern, just price trading below profile support. And that may be where price is targeting. That would be between the sell zone, which would be between 2272 and 2285. If the Russell closed above 2285, that would tell us that this has been nothing, that this has, if it closes above that, that tells us that this move is not a counter trend move. Its next resistance level will be at 2311. Now let's go switch over to my white background charts. Um, uh, those profiles have just updated here. So let's take a look at those. They've got different profiles than we have on my black background screens out there. Hopefully by this evening, everything gets pulled together. Here we take a look at the ES Mini. That's got the same profile levels now. It had different ones you know, about an hour ago. We'll continue looking at this when we get back to this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the daily charts on my black background screens for the equity future contracts. Take a look at the new profiles that have formed. The ES Mini right now is in line with what we saw in the black background screen, so nothing really to talk about there. The NQ is not. The NQ has the way that the profile typically forms out here. Uh, you've got the support level at 2000, 086.50, resistance up at the 2788.50, and the center of the profile, it's a slightly bearish structure, just slightly, as, we, as at the 2476.50 level out there. No bottom pattern out here. It's just really been a sideways move uh, for several weeks out here inside of the NQ. It still has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside that's in place that would take us back to its all time highs out there. But but uh, again, we'll see if these profiles take hold at the uh, when the uh, session opens this evening. Uh, the Dow you're looking at here on this set of screens, I don't have that profile that formed on my black set of screens out there. Uh, but again, on that black uh, background screens, I'm using my advanced Doppler tool. Nothing else to report on the Russell except that price right now is taking on its oscillator and change line resistance level. Price has tested that uh, four different times, today being the fifth time. Well, yesterday was the fifth time today the sixth time and it's always by session end found resistance that number for the day is at 2248 n closing above that would be a uh, positive out there uh yeah you're seeing my white background screens right now we had looked at the black background screens before so uh, watch that level because if price closes above that green acid and change line in lieu of any other profile we should make a run for the 2272 to 2285 level. What each of us are doing is we're looking for clues as to what the market's intentions are. For example, the Dow, as you can see, Dow Equity Future Contract, yesterday was a bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. Not uh, be, no surprise out here that we're seeing a rally out there. And uh, price should rally up towards the center of the current profile, which is either 42,379 or what the uh, black background chart is showing, I'm not showing it to you, just I'm reading off of it, is that if price can close above 42,301, 42,301, we're likely to see it move up to the 42,709 level. Now, that green oscillator and change line, which is what you typically see price rally into um, after it forms a, a bottom pattern out there, but we have to respect the fact that price has been below the bottom of that current daily profile. Again, I don't know if it's the current one or not, but, but at least the one that was in place as of yesterday out there. 
um, uh, for uh, what uh, one for, for several sessions. This will be uh, session number five below profile support out there. So that says that a counter trend move, if this is in fact the new profile, new profile doesn't form, 42.512 is a level where a uh, counter trend rally would come to an end. Okay, so that covers that stuff. Now really what I thought today, I wanted, we're gonna take a look at instruments uh, requests that have come in, but really what I was gonna uh, uh, focus uh, uh, a little bit on this morning was really the, today's show, and every everyday show really, is about trying to find clues out here. So clues as to what the market's intentions are. So that's what we're gonna try to do right now. I'm gonna switch over to a uh, to what is my black background screen normally, but I've got a PowerPoint that I've put together uh, for us to take a look at this. So let's get that up here. And obviously it's election day, so everybody get out and vote. This is not the presentation I gave last night with uh, Jacob out there uh, during the Tom O'Brien show. So if we take a look at what was Stevie looking at, I'm looking for clues. So what I've done is I've gone back to prior election days, just to understand what's going on from a daily, a weekly, and a monthly standpoint. What I'm looking for, is there any kind of consistent message that comes from these set of charts? And then how do we take that over and take a look at what's going on with the current set of charts? So here's the 2020 election. And the uh, blue arrows represent the day, the week, or the month of that election. And so what and this is what I've done here is I've identified the day after the election on the daily time frame chart. I don't have a way to do that, obviously, on the weekly time frame chart. But if we take a look at the 2020 election uh, charts for the S&P 500, we can see that the day following election, there was a nice gap to the upside and price was back above its green oscillator and change line. A green oscillator and change line and trading above that tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions, period. Well, semicolon. What do you mean semicolon? What do you mean period? Well, I mean, if you're forming a top, so if there's a TD nine count top and you're above that green oscillator and change line, then what we're expecting is price to pull back and in fact, test that level out there. So the daily time frame, that signal price is above the oscillator and change line. It continued moving higher. As the week came to an end, you can see that price closed above the uh, green oscillator and change line, again, a bullish condition. And the same for the monthly time frame chart out there. In fact, in fact the monthly time frame chart, um, you know, almost held that green oscillator and change line, even the low of that uh, uh, pattern out there. So what does this tell us? This says, notice how price is above the uh, their respective green oscillator and change line levels. Because that is a signal. It's a powerful signal out there. Let's take a look at where we're at today. Today, now this today is as of about maybe uh, an hour ago or so. Uh, but nonetheless, it's the S&P 500. Well, we, are, we don't have a bottom pattern, but price did pull back to its TD9 count breakout level. And that area has basically held. When you get back to the bottom of a breakout level, that can be a bottom. So I'm saying I have a bottom pattern other than that. Price, however, is below that green oscillator and change line. So not what we saw in the daily time frame for 2020. Of course, you can get a big gap up tomorrow and get above it, and then that would be emulating the 2020 uh, cycle. On a weekly time frame, we're below that green oscillator and change line. We've got a TD9 count top in place out there. And on the monthly time frame, we have a TD9 count top, but price above that green oscillator and change line. So it's only the monthly in this instance where price remains above that. What does that tell Stevie? That says on a move lower, uh, if that's how the market responds, regardless of who wins out there, we'd be looking to see if 55.66 holds as support. Of course, it's only the beginning of the month out there, but still that's gonna be a key level to watch. Well, let's go back further. Let's take a look at what took place uh, at the uh, uh, 2016 election. The daily chart had formed a TD9 count bottom pattern on November 4th. The election date was uh, November the 8th out there. So that had given, and by that day, uh, November the 8th, we were already trading above that uh, uh, oscillator and change line out there. Now it was red, but it changed to green. Um, still, we are above a key level of support out there on the daily time frame. Turns out that on the weekly time frame, when the week closed, uh, what that did was close above that green oscillator and change line. So that's something you're going to want to look for come Friday. Are we above or below that on the S&P for its weekly time frame? And then finally, we take a look at the monthly time frame. Uh, it had closed just above its green oscillator and change line, was forming bar number eight of a TD9 count top out there. It did form that TD9 count top, which was uh, negated immediately. You can see out here, I, I don't have a crosshair that I can put on here, but you can see bar nine, bar following bar number nine, and the very next bar, the very next month, price closed above that. Total 
told us about a strong upward momentum move. Look at how price held that green oscillator and change line out there. Very bullish signals. Uh, what do we see when we take a look at the uh, 2012 election? Well, in 2012, the day after the election, well, the day the day of the uh, of the election, price had rallied uh, right into that red oscillator and change line. In fact, it had closed just above it. But what does Stevie require? Two consecutive closes above a resistance level or two consecutive closes below a support level to tell us that that move is more likely real than not. In this case here, um, what we can see is that uh, – as that uh, a price on that very next day closed below and it was a red oscillator and change line. Those are simply bearish conditions. And then what did it do on November 16th? Just a uh, you know a week or so after the election? Well, what it did was it formed a nice wave seven. That's courtesy of Basil Chapman and a buy the D point pattern. Well, that's courtesy of uh, H.M. Gartley out there. We come back from this break. We're going to continue looking at just a few more charts, just simply sharing with you some thoughts of what we would look at for signals as to what the markets are communicating to you and I as we head into this election. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, charts here just to try to get some clues as to prior election uh, days, what was going on inside the S&P 500 for its daily, weekly, and monthly. We're looking for clues here so that we can apply that to the following days as the results roll in. What we just learned here from this 2012 set of charts, and we've only talked about the daily so far, is even though price was trading lower, uh, don't uh, think that that means that the markets are going to crash or something like that. I've heard a lot of narratives out there, but I don't believe those are people that have actually historically taken a look at charts and chart patterns out there. In this case here, we saw in 2012, we just waited for the uh, um, uh, for the uh, daily S&P 500 to generate its bottom pattern, which it did, which was a wave number seven and a buy the D point pattern. Then we just simply rallied from there. In the 2012 weekly chart, we were already below the oscillator and change line. During that week, there was a little bit of a rally up towards that, never got above it. And then we continued trading lower. As we can see here, it was really the daily time frame that identified that bottom. On a monthly basis, price closed above its green oscillator and change line, and it just simply continued to rally. You can see, if you look at that right-hand chart, just how important that green oscillator and change line is out there. So let's take a look at a couple more election cycles that we've got. We've got the uh, 2008 uh, election. Here, if we take a look at the daily time frame, uh, the day after the election, what we see is that price was, there was no topping signal. Price had rallied, but when we move over to the weekly time frame chart, where did price rally into? It rallied right into that green oscillator and change line and then turned down from there. What uh, formed a, uh, if we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, and again, this is back in 2008, it was a weekly buy, the D point bottom that formed, that, that uh, generated the bottom pattern, that March uh, to, uh, pattern out there, March bottom. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, First of all, during the election month, we were already below that red oscillator and change line. No bottom signal or anything at that stage. What this did bottom with back in uh, March of 2009 on a monthly basis was one of your favorites, that TD nine count bottom pattern out there. And finally, let's take a look at the, uh, this is 2004. Actually, I think I have 2000, so two more uh, cycles to cover here. We can see the day after the 2004 election on a daily basis, price was above that green oscillator and change line. And so the rally just simply continued. You did get a, a daily TD9 count that just simply moved into a sideways move for about four days. And then the rally resumed on a weekly basis. The day the week before, price had closed above its green oscillator and change line. Same thing on that week. And then on the monthly time frame, price was above the green oscillator and change line on a monthly basis in November. And that was also negating a TD9 count top. So no, it's no surprise there that price continued to rally. Finally, I think the last one that I've got here is for 2000. So we've gone from 2000 to 2020 out here. If we take a look at the 2000 election, uh, the day after uh, the uh, 2000 uh, election price topped at its weekly oscillator and change line. So just what we looked at on the 2004 a cycle out there. So you want to, you know, make sure that you are looking at multiple time frame charts because we didn't see any kind of top or any kind of resistance out here on the daily time frame. But when we turned it over to the weekly, in this case here, the weekly chart was moving from green to red, right at the time that price tested and rejected that level. Now that's a pretty bearish signal out there. Uh, finally, if you take a look at the monthly chart in 2000, price was already below the uh, its oscillator and change on and just simply continued to move lower out there. In fact, you take a look at we saw just simply a series of of lower highs out there, uh, so something to uh, pay attention to. So that's all I've got. So how would I sum that up? I'm going to sum that up, come all the way back to the uh, beginning out here, and I'm going to say if everything, if price uh, tomorrow, for whatever reason, is above the daily, the weekly, and the monthly uh, green oscillator and change line, and where is that at as we speak right now? That would be this chart right here. That would be at about the 5810 level on a daily. That's about the 5840 level on the weekly. And the monthly is already above that area. So if we do close above the, uh, the high from uh, two months ago, uh, we close above that. Now it's on a monthly basis, so it's got you know tomorrow is not really going to be the the so-called trigger out there. But you watch the patterns, and we watch those green oscillator and change lines, and that's going to help us uh, make calls on the uh, market out there. So let's do this here, since I've been you know bloviating, but I think it's important. At least it's important for me, and hopefully it's important for you to understand how the market uh, uh, responds. Now, if I take a look at, I'm just going to go. Switch over to the white background charts. We'll start going through some requests out there. But I want to do one thing before we do that. I think I want to do one thing. Yeah, this is the S&P 500. So here's the live S&P 500 charts out here. On a monthly basis, I just wanted to give you the number. On a monthly basis, if price were to close the month above 
56-23-89. That would be a negated TD9 count pattern, and that says that we continue to motor on. But we've got a mixed signal out here. Um, and again, that mixed signal, as we took a look at those other charts, on a retracement here, what price should do, if it's still a bullish market, would be find support at its monthly oscillator and change line, and that's at 55.71. So let's move on to a couple of requests that have come in, and thanks for those. Uh, Brent wrote in early this morning, want to take a look at ticker symbol U U U U U U out there, uh, four U's actually, and uh, this is looking for a bottom. Out here, and what we have with regard to U U U U is we've got an A to B equals C D pattern to the downside. We do not have a bullish reversal candle, so hard for me to call that a daily bottom. What Brent was wondering on this move to the downside, because that A to B equals C D, is there any other support? On the daily time frame, there is not. Price is below the green oscillator and change line. Price is below the bottom of its profile. A bullish reversal candle would go ahead and give us that buy the D point pattern. We don't have that. We're trained above yesterday's high. That's bullish. Where price did find support was at its weekly bullish structured profile. The weekly bullish structured profile is between the level of 511 $5.11 and $5.39 out there. And what Price did yesterday was got back to that level, tested and rejected that. So I wrote back to Brent early this morning because it came in pretty early as I had looked at these charts and said, well, we don't have that bullish reversal candle, but Price has pulled right back into its buy zone out there. When we pull back into a buy zone, well, that could be the buy area. If we look at some intraday charts out here, let's just see what we can see for Brent. And we've got the 65-minute chart up on my screen right now. I don't have a bottom there. But what price should do, Brent, is rally up towards 597. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. Let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see what we have out here. On a 30 minute, you've got a TD9 count bottom pattern. In fact, if price can close above on a 30 minute basis, the TD9 count high as well, Brent, that's at 580. We're at 582 as we speak right now. This bar is going to close in uh, at 12 noon. So if we close above that level, you should see a move to 597. Nice bottom pattern there. When something on a daily time frame might be bottoming, and getting back to your weekly buy zone could do that. Uh, then what we look for is the intraday charts to see if we've got confirmed buy signals out there. Well, we've got two more time frames that we can look at, 130. On the 130, I do not have a buy signal out there. And then the final one would be the 195-minute time frame. So we go take a look at 195. There's two 195-minute bars on a daily basis, and I don't have a bottom signal there. So it's just a 30-minute time frame chart for uh, Energy Fuels, Inc. out there. Uh, that has the intraday bottom signal. We come back from this break. Let's go take a look at BBAI, then Aspen, then the 30-year Treasury, and Palantir for our friend Jacob inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
tips and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So the one thing I did want to note on the S&P 500 charts is uh, if, if asking the question, is there any potential that uh, we may be at a major top? And with regard to the S&P charts, the answer is yes. And the reason I say yes is because the daily time frame has a TD9 count top. The weekly time frame has a TD9 count top. The monthly time frame has a TD9 count top out there. So there is a possibility when all three indices have topping signals, preferably each would have Rhodes momentum indicator tops. That's when we typically see the largest moves, whether to the upside or to the downside. Um, we don't have that here. Uh, even though we've got signals that are present, we don't have those bearish reversal candles that Stevie requires in order to confirm that signal. But there still is that potential out there because all three of these uh, daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts do have topping patterns on them. Okay, let's go back to our request line out here. And the next one is for BBAI. We take a look at BBAI. One of the first things that we notice, of course, I need to look at the chart there. I was doing something else. One of the first things that we can see is that prices trade on a daily basis with inside its bullish structured daily profile. And at the moment, price is taking on the center of that profile. Now, if we close above 171 today and we close above 171 tomorrow, that would be two consecutive closes above a key resistance point out there. Now, we have did that once before and it didn't work out. Uh, that should signal and move back to 194, the top of that daily profile. Now, price is trading into that prior swing point that formed out here on October 29th, day number two above the center of that profile. The volume on that day was 4.1 million shares, Dan, and today we're at 3.6 already. So we're pushing into that swing point with volume. So that says to us that price should at least test that swing point high. That's a buck seventy-five. And if it closes above that, then that should signal to us we're back to buck ninety-four. The resistance level on the weekly time frame, 189. That would be the bottom of its profile. And on the monthly time frame, the resistance level is the bottom of its profile as well. And that's at 152. So you got 152, 189, but I think the more important number to be watching is going to be how does price handle that swing point from October 29th, handle that high, which it should at least test, and that's at a buck 80 out there. So hope that helps you out with regard to BBAI. Uh, we're going to take a look at Aspen. ASPN is the ticker symbol as well. Aspen right now has a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. Uh, everybody listening, if you're looking to uh, trade ASPN, you've got a bottom pattern. Now, in order for this to really get legs out here, what needs to happen is price is going to have to close above that oscillator and change line. So that's the key right now for Aspen. We're trading into that red oscillator and change line right now. That's, got, uh, that's at the 1843 level. 
There's a new profile that formed yesterday. That new profile has support at 1772 and resistance up at the uh, 2019 level out here. Now, this is a bullish structured profile as well. So closing above that red oscillator and change line, Dan, that's the bullish outcome that you're looking for. And that would then signal move up towards 2019. The weekly time frame chart has just simply pulled back into a prior swing point. That was the swing point from August 9th. There were 13 million shares. Last week, we did 11 million shares. So price has been pulling back in that swing point with lighter volume. If the daily gets legs, you're going to see the uh, weekly chart move up to resistance, which at 2072. The resistance level on a monthly time frame would be at 2105. You'd be at really two of them, 1975-ish. That's the green oscillator and change line. And then 2105. So nice daily bottom pattern out there. And if this can close above that red oscillator and change line, Dan, you should see a further rally. Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den is wondering, is a 30-year Treasury bond giving us any clues going into the election day out here? So let's pull up those charts. We pull up these charts out here. The first thing we know on a monthly time frame, I'm just simply, that's a continuous contract. That's all that I can truly access and get any good data. It's got a nice road to indicator bottom with price consolidating with inside its profile. Now, price has not been able to get above the center of that bearish structured profile. That price point is about 125.27. Price may be targeting its uh, uh, oscillator and change line. That's a support level, 115.12. And below that, we'd be looking at a move towards a 110.03 level. So the monthly chart um, got a bottom pattern, but it has been unable to take out the resistance level. On a weekly time frame, no bottom pattern, no bottom signal. That would suggest that price might be targeting its swing point for the week of uh, April the 26th, anywhere from 113.04 to 115.14. We take a look at the daily time frame chart. TD nine count bottom pattern. I'm just simply going to expand this out. You got that TD nine count bottom pattern completed on November the first out there, but price has been unable to get above its sell zone out here. A counter trend rally. So right now, each of the rallies since that bottom pattern has formed have found resistance at either the bottom of the profile, the bottom of the 30 year profile is at the 118.05 level. The center is at 118.18. And that's really the key out here, Jambalaya. If price can close above 118.18, then you might have some traction to the upside with the uh, levels of resistance or the battles that would be fought next at 119.12 and at 120.06 out there. That's coming from the daily time frame chart. So are there clues? The clues are from the daily and the monthly in that they're attempting to form bottoms. But price has been unable to take out those key resistance levels. So I've got to go more with neutral than bullish or bearish out there. I hope you understand that and take a look at it. With regard to the intraday charts out here, I don't really see much that is assisting us with one exception, and that would be the two-hour time frame chart. The two-hour time frame chart formed a TD9 count top. It did that at 12 noon on the 4th. That was yesterday. And what did price do right now? It has pulled all the way back to its breakout level, 117.09. If price closes on a two-hour basis, and that would be 12 noon, 12, 2, and 4, uh, below 117.09, what that would be telling us is that we should head lower. And head lower could mean to test that TD9 count bottom pattern, and that would be down at 116.16. So, Jam, I hope that helped you out with regard to the 30-year Treasury. As always, thanks much for taking the time to write in. Let's actually close out those charts, and then let's go take a Palantir. It's a favorite inside the Tiger's Den, uh, and it's been a rocket ship. It's gone from about 5 to 50 or so out there, so that's one heck of a nice uh, move. Let's get back to those charts and see what they are communicating to you and I. Come on, Stevie, get back there. I'm just going to guess that maybe it's this one, and I was right. So if we take a look at Palantir. What we know about Palantir is, and I had mentioned this, I think, even yesterday with, um, uh, with uh, Jacob, and that is that on the trading day of uh, October 25th, it's TD9 count top failed. Now, price went ahead and moved lower out there. Where did it move lower to? Well, move lower to and where it found support was the weekly oscillator and change line out there. And now what we've seen is price, I think they may have come out with earnings. I'm guessing that's what they've done. And it's uh, it's uh, it's taken off to the upside on the daily time frame. We're new all-time highs. There's no topping pattern or signal. This rally should continue. The same thing as the message of the weekly time frame chart and the monthly time frame chart. So it was down here at uh, back in January of 2023. Now uh, we are at um, coming towards January 2025. So in about two years' time, it's gone from about 6 bucks to $51. That is one heck of a nice move. PLTR is that uh, ticker symbol. 
So it looks like that rally should continue. Dan was interested in taking a look at IBRX out here. So let's pull the IBRX uh, chart up on our screen, see what we can find here. And IBRX uh, found support, Dan, at the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 501. And just below that was the green oscillator and change line. Uh, so what we should see is we should see price rally, 584 being its next target, up two closes above 584. We get back to 707. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count bottom. Price is above profile resistance. It did find resistance at its breakdown level at the 671 mark, but the daily says I want to rally. It should rally further. The resistance zone inside the monthly time frame chart is between 503 and 581. 581 would be a level to watch. So yeah, it did find support yesterday. Um, and that is IBRX, Immunity Bio. We come back from this uh, break. We're going to take a look at the S&P's horizontal trading range for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. The next chart I'm putting up on the screen here is the monthly uh, chart that's got the horizontal trading range boundary lines. Those are established by identifying the largest number of co-located opens or closes. Those took place between the price level of 898.24 and 1306.21. That distance established the distances we use for every other horizontal trading range boundary line. Mr. Bill, you've got the S&P 500 right at a key level on a monthly basis. That's at the 5793 level out there. So we 
we are at resistance on a monthly time frame. Not so much on the daily or the weekly. Uh, so it's really about that 5793 area that you would be watching with regard to its horizontal trading ranges. Let's uh, switch back to the, uh, so I hope that helps you out there. Uh, let's switch back to the uh, uh, to the white background charts. And well, where did Stevie put that son of a gun? I, I know you're not looking at it, but I am. Uh, give me a second here to get back to those white charts. We're going to take a look at VICR. Uh, this is for uh, ELO inside the Tiger's Den. So when we take a look at this instrument, right now it's trading about profile resistance. Watch this at day's end. It closed about 5070. Should signal a move towards its high out here from the uh, trading day of October 23rd. That would be 5189. There was 1.2 million shares that traded that day. So far, we're, oh, we're 179,000 shares. So we're pushing into that with a lighter volume. Doesn't matter. It closed about 5070. Should lead us to higher price. The weekly chart is in a bullish breakout mode. It's about profile resistance. And a Sasser and Change Line. That is the uh, same for the monthly time frame. So it looks like BICR wants to continue its rally. And the last request out here was to take a look at Fling. Where did Stevie put Fling? F L N G. I've got bad news at this moment in time, Ronan. Yesterday was a TD nine count bottom pattern completion. And a close below that low. We're trading below that low already, 2302. In day number one, it's going to tell you about a strong momentum move to the downside. Well, the weekly is uh, forming an A to B equals CD to the downside. Get us into the 16 level. If you look at the monthly time frame chart, we're also below a swing point. We're below profile, bullish structure profile. I think 1665 is where FLNG is headed to. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. I'll look forward to joining you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday or maybe inside the Tiger's Den later this evening. Take care, folks.